guys, I wanted to talk today about the drug that is as addictive as cocaine and perfectly legal. And if you watched my last video, you probably guessed from my clue that it's sugar. According to the research I've done, Americans actually consume 196 pounds of refined sugar a year. And I'm not sure that that's even taken into account. Um, corn syrup and those kinds of products. Um, sugar can be found though in just about every packaged processed food because they know it's addictive. Um, that actually includes uh, medications and cigarettes, which might surprise some people, but you know, take a look at the ingredients on your medications and see. Um, those things are actually highly addictive if they have sugar in them. Um, so what are some of the symptoms of sugar imbalances? Uh, we've got cravings, physically full but still feeling hungry. Um, you can get shaky or jittery with missed meals. Dizziness, fatigue, irritability, mental fog or sluggishness, feeling worse or having no energy after eating. And those are just a few of the side effects that, and the symptoms that you can have with a sugar addiction. Um, so uh, this is my disclaimer. I'm not a healthcare provider. I'm not um, medically trained in any way. I'm just sharing with you things that I've learned in my research and hopefully that will spur you on to do more of your own research and um, hopefully help you to on your road to health. Well, how do I define sugar? Because obviously, you know, I've got things here that are not sugar. Um, and that, that 196 pounds per year, that's processed refined sugar. So um, what I'm mostly going to be talking about today, though, is how our body uses um, natural sugars as well as processed sugars. So our body is going to convert a lot of these, um, these bread type items, starch type items, even these, you know, fruit and um, some starchy vegetables, your body will convert those things into glucose. So um, when I say sugar, sometimes I might be referring to the processed sugar, sometimes I might just be referring to a starchy food um, because your body will um, metabolize that and it will basically become sugar within your body. Um, so uh, they will react a little differently though and we'll talk about that. So um, why is it important to talk about sugar and blood sugar and balancing sugar um, it's actually a very complicated subject and that's why this video has taken me so long to put out because I've been going through all of my past notes and research and lectures and books and all of those things to try to come up with a summary um, and I'm going to try to do that for you but keep in mind this is a very complicated um, subject and um, the way that your body processes sugar, how it uses it, it's, it's all very complex and I'm just going to try to simplify it as best I can and hope that um, that information will be helpful to you. So um, glucose, when your body eats something like this, let's say you have, oops, you have a popcorn baggie, um, your body is going to take the starches in this food and convert it into glucose. Now sugar itself and glucose is not a bad thing. Your body needs that. Um, it actually is the number one source of energy for your brain. Without sugar in your bloodstream, your brain would shrivel up and die, basically. And um, it also, though, too much sugar in your brain will cause malfunction. And we'll get to that in just a minute. So, um, I'm still though addressing why are we talking about this. Uh, so blood sugar imbalances, um, also they affect your brain function. They also will affect your hormone balance. Um, when your blood sugar is um, spiking and dropping and, and doing this kind of thing, your hormones go right along with that because they have to um, rise and fall to deal with the sh blood sugar issue. Um, so those, those hormone imbalances then lead to other degenerative diseases of aging. So you basically will age faster with um, blood sugar imbalance. So believe it or not, never before in the history of the world have human beings had to deal with an overabundance of sugar in their bloodstream. 
So our bodies are designed to deal with natural sugars, um, to deal with small amounts of sugars, um, and we'll talk about how it does that in just a minute. Uh, but there isn't really a design there to deal with huge influxes of sugar. Um, so, and we'll talk about that too and, and how that throws things off. So it, it's kind of a new thing in the history of the world that we're dealing with a lot of the diseases that we're dealing with now. Not that the diseases are new, um, but just this emergency need to lower blood sugar is a new thing for the human body. Um, so let's take a look at this and let's see if we can figure out how you can use sugar to your advantage because your body needs it rather than being enslaved by it and the addiction of it. Um, so here's how sugar should work within your body. Um, you eat a nice um, low sugar food. It, it's got some sugars in it, but it's, it's not, you know, processed white sugar. Um, and that the sugar in this food is going to basically light the fires of your metabolism. It's like a kindling. Sugar is like kindling that kind of gets things going, gives you a, a quick boost of energy, and um, starts you off. Now when you intake these natural healthy carbohydrates, uh, could be any healthy carbohydrate, fruit, um, starchy vegetables, we've got beans and grains, um, when you intake those in their natural form, you get these long strands of fibers and things that slow down the processing of the sugar in your body. So you get this nice gradual influx of sugars that go into your bloodstream and, and on into your brain, which is the guy that needs it. Um, so also along with these uh, foods, if you're also eating fats and proteins along with them, that also helps regulate the absorption of the sugars, um, which normally people don't just sit down and eat butternut squash by itself. So usually you would be having some fats or proteins with it. Um, so as the glucose is used up in the brain, um, your, it, your blood sugar drops back down, you know, it's getting used as it comes in. Um, your blood sugar gradually drops back down and then you feel hungry again. And you know, your brain is telling you I need more fuel, okay, I'll go eat some more. So that's the way it's meant to work. And then also the, the liver and the pancreas kind of control your blood sugar throughout the day. If there's, if there's too much, then it gets shuttled through the liver and, and gotten rid of because too much would be as dangerous to the brain as not enough. Um, so your body can regulate that um, in, on a normal day. So now let's talk about what happens when you eat a processed refined carbohydrate. So even this organic um, dehydrated cane juice that I have over here, this is still a very concentrated form of sugar. You're not getting the fiber and the minerals and the other things um, that go along with it to slow down that metabolism of it. Um, even honey. Honey is also a fairly concentrated form of sugar. Um, but let's say you get, you know, your crackers. This processed, refined flour. Um, in real, this is just an example. Your boxed, processed foods. Um, so you intake that, and let's even go beyond that. Candy bars, you know, or a pop. That blood or that sugar is going to be very small particles. It's not accompanied by fiber and it's going to pass right into your bloodstream very quickly. So now you've got this huge dump of sugar into your bloodstream, which goes on to your brain, and this is gonna cause um, some side effects in your brain. Um, so some of the things that might happen, uh, you get hyperactivity, sudden energy or low energy, moodiness. Um, this blood sugar spike that is now affecting your brain triggers an emergency response in your body. Um, it, your body says, what's happening to our brain? This is not normal, malfunction. And um, so your adrenaline kicks in. So now you get a spike in your adrenaline. Um, it's an emergency. The adrenaline quickly, and cortisol also quickly, shuttle off all that extra sugar, dump it into your liver to filter it out. Um, the, the liver is the filter of your bloodstream, so it's going to try to filter out all of this excess 
Now, if this is something that happens on a regular basis, your liver is going to get um, over flooded with these toxic substances because really it, to your body that excess sugar is a poison it will damage your brain so it's trying to get rid of this poison um, now if if this is a continuous thing that happens day in and day out your liver is going to get overburdened and um, that excess poison is going to back up into your you know it's going to stay in your bloodstream recirculate continue to cause problems within your brain um, and it will, with, with the excess sugar, just to save your, your body, you know, your body will shuttle that into fat cells and, and encapsulate that toxin in a fat cell just to protect itself. So now you get, you're gaining weight. So um, the other issue with this is because the blood sugar spikes cause your adrenaline to spike, and this can cause if it's continually happening, adrenal fatigue, which we talked about a little bit in the first video. Um, and this is something I'm going to demonstrate how to test for again at the end because I know a lot of people couldn't hear it in the first video. So, um, so we will talk a little bit more about that, but, but this is a huge cause of adrenal fatigue is this constant spike in blood sugar. So once the body um, recognizes this emergency, it, it shuttles off all the excess sugar that it can, either through the liver and, liver and pancreas or into fat cells. Now you have a sudden drop in blood sugar. And now your body is saying, oh no, now my brain doesn't have enough to work with because we've gotten rid of all the sugar. Now you're craving sugar again because your brain does still need fuel, but it doesn't need that much all at once. So, so now it's gonna cause the same vicious cycle to happen again. It's going to make you crave more sugar, and you're going to eat, probably most people will choose the, the quickest source of energy, which is a really sugary treat, um, which is going to spike your, your blood sugar again, and then we're going through that same cycle all over again. So, um, and this is also how um, type, I believe it's type 2 diabetes happens, um, you know, the constant blood sugar spikes and drops. Um, and, and your, your insulin is constantly having to try to get rid of that. And this is what I talked about with this emergency need to get rid of sugar that we've never had a problem with, you know, 200 years ago. Um, so now you've got weakness, fatigue, insomnia, all of those things can be um, consequences of the low blood sugar. And another thing that I wanted to mention um, is that the sugar, the, the refined sugars that are highly processed and those small particles, these are actually going to feed um, some of the bad bacteria in your gut. So when people are choosing most of their diet to be these refined carbohydrates and starches and sugars, um, they're, they're feeding something called candida, which is a yeast that lives in the gut. And if you know anything about yeast, if you've ever made bread or um, if you know how they make alcohol with yeast, a little bit of sugar causes that yeast to just explode and just grow exponentially. Um, so the continual feeding of that yeast can cause it to overgrow in your intestines. And this, the reason I'm mentioning this is because that yeast will actually kind of hijack you and cause you to crave the food that it wants. So it will tell your brain you need more sugar because it wants more sugar. So if you have severe cravings for sugar, um, I would encourage you to check into um, test yourself for candida and I'll, I'll link here a video about that. It's very simple to do, it's free. Um, and then if, if you find that you have candida, that's a whole other series that you would need to deal with. Um, and the, the lady that I'm linking up here has a great program for that, which I am actually going through right now, and it's it's been really, um, really life-changing. So I would strongly encourage you to, even if you don't think you have a candida overgrowth, to check and see, um, because that can affect your blood sugar handling tremendously. So here's how we're gonna help you to keep that blood sugar balanced. So instead of doing this thing and spiking your insulin and your adrenals and all of everything, um, we're going to try to keep your blood sugar 
steady. And especially if you already have adrenal fatigue, it's very, very important that you keep that blood sugar stable so that your adrenals can take a break to rest and heal and recover. Um, this is also very important with diabetes um, to keep that blood sugar stable. And if you have diabetes, make sure that you are continually checking your blood sugar if you do decide to try this. Um, so the very first thing to keep your blood sugar stable is never skip a meal. When you skip a meal, your blood sugar drops tremendously and um, that creates that, that craving, which then you're going to go to the quickest source of energy, which is the processed carbs. Um, so you, you must eat three balanced meals, and we will talk about that in a later video, how to balance the meals. Um, three balanced meals a day. If you have adrenal fatigue, you also need two to three small snacks. If you're doing this, make sure that you make the meals and the snacks smaller um, because you don't want to, you know, pack on way more food than you need. Um, if you struggle with not having an appetite in the morning, which I know a lot of people do, um, they just don't feel like eating breakfast, so they just skip it. But this really does um, create problems with your with your blood sugar levels because your cortisol is trying to rise in the morning and you need a source of energy to get that going. Um, so if you do struggle with that, um, there's some things you can try. Um, you can try making sure you eat dinner before 6.30 and then fast until breakfast time and then you'll be good and hungry, hopefully. If you cannot make it that long, if you have extreme adrenal fatigue and you need something before bed, you can eat a couple of bites of a high protein snack, um, but you know, try not to eat too much because you want to be hungry enough in the morning. The other thing that can cause you to not be hungry in the morning is um, liver. Um, like if your liver is backed up and not funneling things out quickly enough, it's going to tell your body you can't handle any more food yet, I'm not done processing the food you've already had. Um, so that lemon water that we talked about in the first video, um, you want to make sure that you're drinking 16 ounces of lemon water in the morning, first thing when you get up, because that will flush out your liver, your, your um, pancreas, it, it'll just flush everything out and open you up to be able to eat. Um, also, you might consider additional liver support, um, things like beets and um, uh, dandelion are, are very good for supporting your liver. Uh, you can get supplements at the health food store, they can help you with that. So if, if you're not hungry in the morning, check into liver su supplements or for sure make sure you're doing that lemon water. Um, so. You also want to make sure that you're combining carbs with fats and proteins. So never eat a carbohydrate alone. Always, always combine it with a healthy fat. Let me stipulate that the, the fats in this popcorn here, not healthy. <laughs> so, you know, you've got hydrogenated whatever. Um, so make sure you're combining your carbohydrates with uh, grass-fed butter, coconut oil, olive oil, avocados, um, any of those healthy fats are going to slow down the absorption of that sugar. Um, also, another thing to keep your blood sugar stable is you want to um, keep your carbohydrate portions small so that you're not flooding your system with a lot of sugar all at once. Um, so keep your carbohydrates with a meal preferably, and if it's a snack, make sure there's proteins and fats, and, and make sure the carbohydrate is a small quantity. So if, if you're still eating these kinds of things, look at the portions and, and make sure that you are only eating one serving, or even less, um, because your body can actually manufacture its own carbohydrates, believe it or not. Um, it cannot manufacture its own protein. But carbohydrates, it can pull um, proteins or fats out of your system and use those to burn as carbs. So you really don't need as much as most people think. Most people feel like they have to only eat carbohydrates or eat, you know, a whole bag of chips. But your body only needs half a cup per meal, really. Like a, a cup and a half a day is probably plenty of carbohydrates. And especially if you're eating complex carbohydrates. So that's the other suggestion is um, make sure your portions are small and then 
choose complex carbohydrates, which take longer to digest. They have the fibers in them. Um, they're going to not be a sudden influx of sugar, but they're going to be a nice, steady supply. Um, so here's another thing that I actually have just learned is resistant carbohydrates. Um, these are carbohydrates that resist digesting in the small intestine, which is where you would be feeding the candida with those sugars. They're in the small intestine. Your large intestine kind of gets overlooked. Um, you know, there's probiotics in your small intestine, there's probiotics in your large intestine, and probiotics feed on fibers and um, the nutrients that you get from vegetables and fruits. So when you are eating a lot of these processed refined carbohydrates, you're feeding what's in the small intestine, and mostly the bad bacteria that's in the small intestine, and it all gets digested before it ever gets to the large intestine. So these resistant starches actually will kind of pass through the small intestine and go on into the large intestine and feed your good bacteria there. Um, now a resistant starch would be something like sweet potatoes, um, squash, better not squash is great, uh, green bananas, not ripe bananas because those become more sugary and starchy, um, green apples here, those Actually, green apples aren't a resistant starch, but those are a, a less sugary version of a, a fruit. Um, so green bananas, soaked black beans and legumes that have been soaked overnight and then cooked properly. Um, so here are two that um, have kind of become, you know, the evil uh, carbohydrates nowadays. Nobody's eating potatoes and rice because they're too starchy. You can actually turn these into a resistant starch by um, soaking the rice, brown rice, overnight and then cooking it and cooling it in the refrigerator for several hours. The starches then in the rice are going to expand and become more resistant and then pass through and feed your large intestine. Same thing with potatoes. If you cook them ahead and cool them down, and I. I'd have to look at this a little closer. I believe you need to boil them, but um, you might look at that and check on it. Um, so cooked ahead and then cooled in the refrigerator, they become resistant starches. So you can have your rice and potatoes again, yay! So um, another thing that you can do to um, kind of change out your carbohydrate intake is replace some of these refined sugars with something like xylitol, which I don't normally recommend because it's also processed, but it's less of a sugar load on your body. So if, if you're a complete sugar addict and you just need something to help you kind of get over that hump, you could use xylitol. Um, monk fruit and dark liquid stevia are great replacements also for sugar. Those do not spike your blood sugar. Um, the, the stevia is an herb, so it will taste sweet to you, but it's not going to feed the bad bacteria in your gut. It's not going to spike your blood sugar. So making some of those changes and just shifting away from the processed refined carbs and um, getting more of the complex carbs in place of those is a great way to, um, to get going. So there are supplements that can help you to reduce your sugar cravings if that's something that you just are really addicted. Um, so I'll just list them off here and um, you might want to get a pencil and write them down if there's something you need. Uh, Gymnema, which you take 100 milligrams three to four times a day to curb those cravings. Uh, L-glutamine is another one. You can use fermented foods to curb your cravings. L-tyrosine, uh, biotin, and chromium. All of those will help reduce sugar cravings. Um, here's another thing that will help you reduce sugar cravings, and you may all not love this one, but exercise. So hopefully if you watched the earlier video on exercise, um, you're walking every day at least, and or at least as often as you can. That exercise actually reprograms your muscles to burn fat rather than carbohydrates. Um, it also curbs cravings, and it produces endorphins, which are those feel-good hormones, and keep you from doing that you know, comfort eating. So here's what we're going to eliminate for this week. Um, I know I've given you lots of things, um, told you lots of things that you could do, but I'm, I'm only going to suggest that you do one specific elimination, and that is um, 
replace and one by one if you have to. If you can go completely off of refined foods all at once, do it. That is the best. But if, if you are completely addicted and just can't, start replacing, you know, St replace sugar with xylitol, replace chips with sugar snap peas, um, and try to replace your processed carbs with complex carbs that, that are slower to release their sugars. That, so here's what I would like to see you add to help balance your blood sugar. Um, add healthy fats with every carbohydrate that you have. Healthy fats and or proteins. So I would say um, olive oil, coconut oil, grass-fed butter, avocados, unheated flax oil. Um, some people do avocado oil. So um, and make sure that you know there are a lot of people that think they're eating healthy oils if they're eating canola or something like that. Um, talk to your your person at the health store or at the health food store if you're not sure, um, or just use the ones that I just listed. Those are all very healthy. Um, so never eat a carb alone. And then the other thing to add is a mi your minimum of three balanced meals a day. No more skipping breakfast, no more skipping lunch. Um, if you are adrenal fatigued or have diabetes, I have a very specific eating plan for you. Because um, these are, you know, people that really need to keep that blood sugar completely balanced long enough for their hormones to recover. Um, so it, with adrenal fatigue or diabetes, you're going to eat breakfast within an hour of rising. Um, and preferably before 10 o'clock. You want to eat an early lunch by 1130. Uh, you can have a snack between 2 and 3 because that's usually if you have adrenal when you're really fatigued. Um, so that, that little snack is going to help keep that blood sugar up and give you a continuous supply of energy so that you don't hit that dip. Um, if, at dinner, you're going to have dinner between 5 and 6. And if necessary, a small snack before bed. Now you also are going to have smaller meals, and small because you're eating those extra snacks, you want to cut your meals back a little bit. Um, and then the third thing that I would say to add is liver support. Um, that the liver is uh, working really hard to keep your blood sugar balanced, and so you want to support it with um, essential fatty acids. Um, so like your omega-3 pills or cod liver oil or something like that. Uh, also a B complex and a vitamin C. So if you can't um, afford supplements or something, then just try to um, do the best you can. Um, those fermented foods can provide you some B vitamins. Um, you can eat things that, you know, squash has a lot of vitamin C in it. So you can get those vitamins from a food if you cannot afford the supplements. Um, so now I just want to quickly uh, go over how to check for candida and how to check for adrenal. So this is your new technique to learn. So um, for candida, uh, and I did link the video earlier, you can go watch her video, um, or um, if you just want to watch this one, that's fine. Um, so you want to get a glass of water, half full, half full of water, a clear glass so that you can see through it. Uh, first thing in the morning before you have brushed your teeth or eaten anything or put anything in your mouth, you're going to work up a dime-sized amount of spit and spit in that glass. And you're going to keep checking on it for about 45 minutes and watch what happens. Um, and it is very important that you don't, do, don't consume dairy while you're doing this test because the dairy could give you a false positive. So um, if when you spit in the glass, your spit either grows little legs down towards the bottom or it just sinks, um, then that is a sign that you have a candida overgrowth in your gut. Um, and you will want to go watch some of the videos um, of the gal that I linked. She does a fabulous job um, explaining candida. She has a program that you can go through. Um, I've kind of just gone uh, pieced it together from watching her videos and done it on my own, but um, she gives people a lot of support. If, so if you have candida overgrowth, I would definitely check into that. It, it makes a huge, huge difference. 
um, and not just it's not just about sugar cravings either. Candida affects everything in your whole body. So, so definitely check that out. Um, so the second thing to check is adrenal fatigue, which can be caused by candida overgrowth. Um, but um, so to check adrenal fatigue, you're going to go into a dark room, maybe a bathroom with no windows or something like that. Close the doors. Um, just get it as dark as you can. It, you know, if you can't get it completely black, that's fine. Um, you need to have a non-LED flashlight. LED would be too bright. And you're going to shine the flashlight to the side of your eye. So don't, don't shine it directly in your eye. That would be painful. So you shine the flashlight to the side of your eye and you're going to watch what happens to your pupils of your eye. If the pupil constricts and stays constricted, then you're fine. If it um, stays constricted and, and watch it for a little while, for a good 30 seconds. If it constricts and then opens back up again, then you probably have adrenal fatigue. So, um, and that it, depending on how long it takes is, is how bad off you are. And so I'm not going to go into all of that, but, um, but if it constricts and then opens back up, your, your eye should not be dilating in the presence of light. You know, when you shine a light on your eye, it should constrict. But if you if your adrenals are fatigued, the muscle control isn't there to keep that dilated or to keep that constricted. So it's going to open back up. The, and when I talk about your eye, I'm talking about the black part. Um, so with adrenal fatigue, that will open back up, and sometimes it'll close and open and close and open, or it'll just vibrate. Um, so go ahead and check that. If if your eye cannot hold that constriction, then um, you're going to want to pay attention to the suggestions for adrenal fatigue. Um, you may want to get a book and read um, read up on it. I actually have some suggestions. So these are the books that I would recommend um, and not just for adrenal fatigue. So this is this is a book about specifically about adrenal fatigue. It's an extremely um, helpful book. I, I use that to work with my adrenal fatigue. And I will link or I will um, put the names of these all down below in the notes. Um, Oops. Sorry. So the Schwartzbein Principle. This is a great book if you have diabetes. Um, really for any hormone imbalances, blood sugar issues. Um, this book will help you get your blood sugar balanced, get your hormones balanced. Um, kind of get it, really any problem that you're having. It gets your, your blood sugar stabilized to get that under control. And then this book, which I am actually still in the process of reading, but I have heard great things about it from my chiropractor, and so I'm going to recommend Sugar Blues if you're interested in reading more. So go ahead and do your own research. Um, hopefully this will help spur you on. Um, so thanks for watching and for sticking it out till the end. I know there's a lot of information in here. Um, if you have any information that you want to add, Go ahead and comment down below. I know there's always things that I forget, and um, I always think of them after I've uploaded the video, or you know, learn something new after I've uploaded the video. So please feel free to add any information that you have that would help others, and uh, you can also ask questions. Um, just scroll all the way down to the bottom, and there's a little place where you can comment. Um, if there's anything you want me to talk about on my next video, um, really anything, go ahead and comment down below. Um, also, I forgot to mention to you to watch for the for the next video, so make sure you're you're keeping your eyes open for that. Um, also, please thumbs up if you liked this video, so that other people know that it's worth watching. Um, feel free to share it with anyone you know that might benefit from it, and. Um, so if you want to subscribe, there's a subscribe button down below, and then click on the bell if you want to get notified of the next video I make. Um, and with that, I thank you for sticking around, and I hope to see you next time.